Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Vikram. In this class, we will try to understand important CPU scheduling terminology. So, the concept of CPU scheduling has already been discussed in our previous video. If you haven't watched that video, please watch that video and come back here. And every video on our channel is going to be a part of entire course or a playlist. Our suggestion is to follow the entire course so that you can have better understanding of the concepts. And the link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Now, let's try to understand this terminology uh, in a detailed way. So, because understanding this concept is very much important for you to understand uh, in our next coming classes where we are going to discuss about CPU scheduling algorithms. So this terminology is used in those algorithms. So please try to focus more on this concept because these, uh, this, this terminology looks very similar. So from one point to another point they look very similar. So please try to focus more and try to differentiate, have a clear differentiation between each and every term. Okay, so the first one is arrival time. Arrival time means uh, is the time at which the process arrives at the ready queue. So, for example, if we are having a, a, a ready queue, so the time at which the process arrives into this ready queue, so that point of time, that point of time is what we call it as arrival time. For example, if 2 is given, means at second second, so at at the second second so the uh, uh, the process has been arrived so at that point the process has been arrived okay so the next one is burst time the amount of time required for the execution of a process for example if we have if we have given uh, a process to the cpu the amount of time taken by the process to complete its execution so amount of time required for the execution of that process is what we call it as burst time so without any inter uh, without any disturbance if the process is given to the cpu if without any disturbance the amount of time taken by that to complete its execution it required to complete its execution is what we call it as burst time try to get that point so without any uh, disturbances without any uh, interrupts the amount of time taken by a process to complete its execution is what you call it as burst time. Okay. Next one is completion time. Completion time is the time at which the processor completes the process. Sorry, at which a process completes its execution. So it is again a point of time. So this is a period of time. For example, to understand burst time, 8 seconds. 8 seconds means if the process is given to the processor CPU then it will take 8 seconds to complete its execution without any interrupt if it is given to the CPU it takes 8 seconds so that is what we call it as burst time again the completion time completion time is the time at which the process completes its execution for example assume that it is 20 seconds why this much amount of time why this much amount of time means there are many different processes which are, which are getting executed at any point of time so if there are 10 processes first certain amount is given for one process then another process then another process so this is how the things will get executed right so uh, in that process for example assume that at the 20th second at the 20th second the process completed its execution what is the actual amount of time taken by the process to complete its execution it is just 8 seconds but here it is at the 20th second it is completing its execution so that point of time is what we call it as completion time that point of time try to get that point that point of time is what we call it as a completion time okay so the next one is Next one is turnaround time. So uh, also written as it is also written as TAT, turnaround time in short form. Turnaround time is simply the difference between the completion time and arrival time. For example, if you take this is the completion time, right? 20 second, 20th second and this is the arrival time. Second second is the arrival time. So the uh, turnaround time is it is 20 minus 2, which is equal to 18, 18. This is just a number okay so it is taking 18 seconds the amount of time for the from the starting point arrival time to the completion time the amount of time that that the process that, that, that the process spends for execution is 18 seconds 
even though it will get executed in 8 seconds because of there are many different different overheads that are there for the uh, processor to get executed uh, for the operating to sy operating system to execute so this is what we call it as turnaround time try to get that point burst burst time and turnaround time both look very similar but they are not okay so the difference between the completion time and the arri arrival time is what we call it as turnaround time and the next one is waiting time so now can you guess what is meant by waiting time so apart from this 8 seconds whatever the time the process is whatever the amount of time the process is waiting in the processor or in the system so that is what we call it as waiting time so what is the mathematical formula for it it is the turnaround time minus burst time it is the turnaround time it means this is the amount of time that the process is pending in the processor minus burst time the actual amount of time taken by the process to complete its execution so this is going to be 10 seconds 10 seconds is the waiting time 8 seconds is the 8 seconds is the amount of time taken uh, this is the, the this 8 seconds is the amount of time taken to complete its execution the process execution so that is what we call it as waiting time waiting time of a process is the difference between the turnaround time and the burst time the amount of time a process waits for getting cpu resources in the ready queue so the amount of time that the processor waits in the ready queue is what we call it as waiting time and the next one is uh, response time response time in short it is called as RT this is waiting time is called as WT of a process is the time after which any process gets CPU resources allocated after entering the ready queue so for example at the second second the process has been uh, the process has been switched from new state to ready state means to the ready queue now for example immediately after entering the ready queue will it get the resources no there are many other processes which are in the queue first they they have to get executed so we have to wait for our turn to get executed on the cpu so the first p first point of time where we got where the process gets its execution time where the process gets its first execution done on the cpu is what we call it as response time for example if at the fourth second if uh, the process has been shifted from ready queue to running state ready queue to running state so that fourth second is what we call it as response time the first time at which the process has been given from the ready queue to the running state so that is that point of time is what we call it as uh, response time okay so these are very important terminology to understand hope you got the clarity on this concept thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates and if you have any doubts regarding this concept please post your doubt in the comment section below and if you feel that this video is helpful to you please give us a like symbol and please share this video with your friends so that they will also get benefited thanks for watching